Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CPA Lady Podcast. My name is Marjorie McPike. I am your host. I am a CPA in Southern California, um, where I help clients with accounting, bookkeeping, tax preparation, tax planning, tax strategies, and generational wealth. Um, just wanted to welcome you to the podcast. I am here with Jay Moore, the healthy accountant, um, and we're going to just be talking about accounting and taxes. So I'm going to let Jay introduce himself and tell you guys um, a little bit more about him. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Marjorie, for having me on. It, it's really awesome and, and incredible um, to connect with people like you in the industry and you know, to be of, of assistance to you and of value. Uh, so thanks again, guys. You know, if you if you haven't heard of me, if you don't know who I am, I'm the healthy accountant. Um, and one of one of my taglines is I help people to account for their life. And so that's that's kind of how I got into, you know, the I guess my new perspective on accounting, which, mm -hmm. you know, traditional accounting background. I never actually did public accounting. Um, until I was laid off in 2000, in 2001. So I went into public accounting from just from working in the public, right? I'm doing bookkeeping, <laughs> I'm doing taxes. And so right. I never actually did public accounting. Um, I always worked, I worked for companies and uh, got laid off. And so, you know, uh, that was 2001, uh, took a chance on an opportunity that I thought was great, which was, hey man, who better to do it than to do it for yourself? Nice. Uh, it was a blessing and a curse. So um, it's exciting, you know, because getting out there, doing it for yourself, that's great, you know, but you could also mess it up too. I have my share of those. Um, so, you know, been, been an accountant since 1995, CPA probably since 2001 in the state of Maryland. And we primarily help um, you know, early stage business, on, business entrepreneurs who have a mission. And so the thing about it is what we help them with now is not what we always help them with. So now we coach you, help people to look at all the, all the little things that are missed so that you can, you can actually create a business that's going to work for you so that, you know, accounting and taxes won't be hard. So, um, that's what we do, and, 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 and our biggest focus is helping the entrepreneur to become an entrepreneur. <clears throat> okay, that's interesting. So, so helping an entrepreneur to become an entrepreneur. So kind of break that down. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of times as, a, as an individual, you start a business, you've got mm -hmm. an idea, you know, let's, you know, let's just take, you know, we, we can even take an accountant, you know, an accountant starts a business, or they start a practice. And, you know, it's interesting these different words that we can use a practice. A practice sounds like we're just doing it for fun. Oh, I'm practicing mm -hmm. on it. I'm practicing doing it. You know, entrepreneur is a person who has ideas. They're looking at opportunities. And from a person who started a practice, I didn't always look at opportunities. I didn't mm -hmm. always see how, how I could take what I had to, to do more and to serve more. And so a lot of times you start a business with a narrow focus, wherein you need a narrow focus, but you need a narrow focus on a big idea. Mm -hmm. And so and so taking a person from, from where they are, which is they're just at that, a lot of times at the beginning stage, you know, I've kind of got this dream, kind of got this passion, but I probably can't do the passion. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do the passion, but why can't you do the passion and the thing that's gonna pay the bills. Like, why can't you do that? You can do both and you can merge those two things together when you can see it for yourself. So start from the dream, you make sure you can like clear up all the obstacles that could possibly come up. That's called like contingency planning. Mm -hmm. um, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, mm -hmm. you know, so you know what, what's, what you're gonna to have to deal with should something happen. And then, then work your way through seeing the real picture of what your business could be like. When I started my business back in 2001, 2002, I just said, I'm just gonna be an accountant, right? I'm gonna do taxes and accounting. And that's what I did until I had a big idea. Mm -hmm. Here's, the big idea wasn't even in, in accounting. It was in mortgages and real estate. And I, I, I actually did way better in that field than I did in accounting back then, which was crazy. It was like accounting yeah. became part-time real estate and mortgages became full-time and I really, things went well. I just didn't know what the steps were. And I made a bunch of mistakes, which mm -hmm. sent me back to step number one. 
<laughs> it's nothing like going back to step no more. <laughs> so, so it's helping people to, to, to make sure they get through the right steps so that when they do start marketing, when they do start selling, they're good to go and they don't actually fall down and, 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 and then forget the vision and the dream that they had from the very beginning. So are, the, are those steps accounting related or are they um, these steps just... are these steps are business related. Okay. Um, so think as an accountant, accountants have an interesting skill set. I think accountants potentially have the ability to do a lot more mm -hmm. than most other pieces of the business because because when you know the numbers, that means that if you know the numbers and you know like the metric behind the number and how something is done, you could potentially bring more value, you know, to a business. But a lot of times accountants, we kind of stay behind the scenes. They're like, right. oh, you know, I don't want to be face, you know, face forward. We want to be at the desk. So the accounting skills that I've developed, I've developed them in such a way that I'm able to now use them in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I don't just use my accounting skills for the sake of processing accounting. I use my accounting skills now for the sake of processing how you can get through all of the hurdles that's gonna come through in the business. And I've had to redesign my whole business because of it. Um, because I can't just tell you what to do and not do it, right? That wouldn't make sense. <laughs> so, so I've had to like tear down walls. I have to tear down so many things just to get to a point where so here's what's interesting. You know, I got this business and I'm doing accounting, I'm doing taxes, doing strategy and planning, mm -hmm. um, payroll, you know, everything that accountants do. Right. I've, I've stripped it down. I've stripped the business down. And so I've stripped it down into, I have four different businesses. Mm -hmm. Here's why. And I'll tell you, and you understand this, mm -hmm. right? You understand it because when you're dealing with tax planning, you want a tax plan before you have the tax plan. You don't right. want a tax plan when you need it right. because you may miss something. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I teach in tax planning is segregate, segregate pieces of your business, the in, some income into other businesses. Mm. Because then when you segregate, then you have a reason to take a different tax deduction, right? Mm. So, you know, one of the biggest ones that I teach a lot of times is the health reimbursement arrangement mm -hmm. and how that works. There's multiple ways that you can do that, but I like the best way. I like to do it the best way. I want mm -hmm. the, the, the no questions asked way. Mm -hmm. See corporations mm -hmm. all day long. It's mm -hmm. the best way to do health reimbursement arrangement, right? But when you're small, you can do it. I said, look, just make that your family business. That's right. not for everybody because you're going to 100% reimburse. You're going to 100% pay for everything, right? Health related. And so uh, you segregate a piece of business because you, you can't just take a tax deduction for the sake of, oh, I just want to, you know, save money on taxes. So I'm going to create this entity. No, that's not how mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. You have to make money. They said, make money first. Right. Then you can take the deductions. Right. So- I've, I had to do this for myself. I'm tax planning myself. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to segregate that. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got one business for this. I got one business for this, one business for this. And so I've just taken the things that we're going to do accounting. So we're only going to do accounting in one business. We'll do taxes. We do taxes in one business. We do coaching in one business. And we have a media company that handles book publishing and, and podcasting and stuff like that. Um, you know, and there's one other nonprofit that we're starting to help with, you know, you know, if I want to give money, you know, to different charities, I give it to myself. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> tax planning, you know, one, I wasn't a natural tax planner. I didn't work at a CPA firm. So I had mm -hmm. to learn taxes from, you know, from books. I got Tom Wheelwright's book behind me, Tax Free Wealth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I had to learn from going to classes and just kind of doing it. But for a long time, I didn't understand tax planning. Mm -hmm. And and then I just, I had to understand it for me. Right. So one thing I would tell an accountant, tax plan yourself, right? right. Tax plan yourself so that you know, especially the ones you can do, mm -hmm. do them all and then teach those first. 
-hmm. But then when you get to when you get to larger, larger type people who need different types of planning, then, hey, you just implement those strategies. You don't have to be doing them, Mm -hmm. but you do have to have your own strategies. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just figured, you know what, why don't I be my own test case in a lot of cases? And so um, that's kind of how I use tax planning. And I teach that. I teach that to my entrepreneurs. I say, hey, you want to zero out your taxes? Mm -hmm. Well, zero out your taxes really it's, it's more about investing than anything, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's about investing because mm-hmm. if you have the investor's mindset, then the investor is always looking at a way to grow their business. Mm-hmm. And they just, you, they say, well, I don't want to pay it in taxes. How can I right. avoid that? Right. Well, just go buy another equipment, go, go do this, go. You got to do something to get a to get tax credits or get additional right. deductions. So it's the investor's mindset that has to be taught to the early, mm-hmm. the early entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you know, because it's not about a handout, it's mm-hmm. about doing something. So when you do something, then you get a benefit. And that's what the government wants. The government wants us to, to do the stuff that they want you to do. And right. they hide all that stuff inside the tax code. Yes, yes, they do. They do. I, I like that you talk about the multiple entities because a lot of people are just stuck on, okay, I'm going to form an LLC and I'm going to form an LLC, you know, and I'm going to form an LLC. It's like, and then, it, and then maybe it's not even multiple LLCs. It's one LLC that they want to put one. everything. everything. In. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then they you want try to, to tell them, it's like, no, you need a different business for this. You need a different, you know, entity for this. And they're like, well, I don't understand all that. So, so it's the mindset. So, so maybe that's kind of where it goes back to is the mindset and and explaining the reasons why you do the different things. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. So think about it like this, you know, you know, you've been around a lot of business owners and you've been doing taxes. And so, and and so you come, you come up against people who, Oh, let me just start an LLC. And a lot of times they'll go start it. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll show up. Oh, I set up my LLC already. So I'm good to go. I'm like, you are. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you didn't call me, right. <laughs> right? you didn't call me, but so, so in think about the mindset of, of, of the, entre- the individual entrepreneur, at least they want to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And look, I read a statistic back in 2016, and I think it was either in the wall street journal Forbes or somebody I can't, I can't remember per se, but they were talking about um, how most small businesses and at the time it's like 28 million like it's more now mm-hmm. um never get over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in gross revenue 75 mm-hmm. percent never get over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a business now so and this is something i had to embrace i said wait a second if you start a business you start a business not just to enrich yourself mm-hmm. This is a mindset. You got t- p- people need to learn this. You're not just enriching yourself. It's not about getting a paycheck where you need to get taken care of and you set that up along the way, but it's about enriching the people. It's helping mm-hmm. more people, hiring, then get more vendors and circulating our dollars. Right. That's how a big company becomes big. Right. They just circulated more goodwill a lot of times first mm-hmm. and it turned into money. Right. And so it's getting getting the small entrepreneur to to realize that, man, it's not just about me here. You know, how can I, as the small entrepreneur, do something great? Great. Right. Everything great starts really small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just got to embrace it. You got to start mm-hmm. and then you got to go through the process. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And the process is hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just say it. It's hard. It's like hard. it's not easy. Come on, it's not easy to. It's not easy to grow a billion dollar business. It's not easy to get to a million dollars. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. Is it simpler today? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's not easy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if it's not easy, if it's not easy, then that means that we can't tell them that it's easy. Mm-hmm. We gotta say, man, mm-hmm. it's gonna be some work. Right. And we got to be real with them. And so as an accountant, you know, I just I've, I've, I've seen it all like it's been 20 years coming on. Mm-hmm. I've seen, I'm like, man, everybody seems to get stuck right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then it was like, well, what are you going to do about it? Right. 
So then I had to start thinking. Health, to start thinking. So the healthy accountant was born mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to help businesses and business owners to get through that hump, that hurdle, um, so that they not only, yeah, they're going to, you're going to fix your accounting and that kind of stuff. Um, but you're going to fix your, you're going to fix everything else that leads to better accounting. Hmm. Okay. I like that you said to account for your life. Yeah. That, that, that's like your tagline, right? That is, that is, that, that was my first tagline uh -huh. account for your life. Um, I've, I've got a few others now. Um, but that's the first one because everybody goes through something, right? So for me, I went through a point in my life where I didn't have a mission. I didn't, I kind of, I kind of was just wandering in life. Uh, mm -hmm. After, after the, the, the bubble burst in real estate in 2008, I lost my pants. Like I lost, like I went down, you know, mm -hmm. I lost my real estate business. I have multiple you know rental homes lost those it was just it was brutal mm -hmm. and um and that was only because I had not done some things mm -hmm. which could look everybody was affected but then some people seemed to have thrived right they was ready mm -hmm. and even some that wasn't ready they got ready they mm -hmm. went ahead and just saw the opportunity for what it was and so at it was it was back then that something started growing. And so account for your life just kind of was like for me to, to get myself together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so I guess I, I do do a podcast called account for your life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like my way of giving back so that people can discover their greatness within them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't, it's, it's, it's a podcast just like this. So it's free mm -hmm. information. You know, so I give free content about how that's possible, how you can account for your life, which if you do it, you will discover who you were created to be. Mm. Absolutely. Because I did. Mm -hmm. So if I did it and I was destitute down and out, then I know that if you were to do some of the things that I speak about and share experiences on, it's 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 without question anybody anybody can discover their greatness mm. that's powerful that's powerful I, you, you um your your voice reminds me are are you like a pastor or something <laughs> <laughs> this is good this is so funny no i'm not a pastor not at all you know what? All right. So this is interesting that you even say that, right? Um, not a pastor, never aspire. Um, I have the, I have the minister's mind. Mm -hmm, I, I, mm -hmm. I'll say, I have mm -hmm. the minister's mind. So mm -hmm. in having a minister's mind, then that may be what you're hearing. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. God, and I'll just say it, God has worked with me mm -hmm. to deliver messages. He's worked with me, you know, and so in working with me to deliver messages, sometimes they will come across a certain way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's just kind of what he's done and what I discovered. You would, you would not know this today, but I stuttered. I, I, you know, public speaking would have been the death of me. Um, all of these things were things that I battled with all throughout my life. And to see how it transformed in a short amount of time, it's almost unreal. So yeah. for you to say, are you a pastor? Like, like, <laughs> man, you just sound like you have that ability. <laughs> um, very short amount of time. I what? started, I started speaking to myself mm -hmm. back in 20, um, 2017. 2017, mm -hmm. I turned on, I turned on my phone mm. on Facebook. Facebook audio had just started. Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like trying to figure out how to set up a podcast back then because it was a little different because it wasn't as easy today mm -hmm. right and I turned on my phone and I just start I do, start doing these 5 10 20 minute messages on my phone um so that I could learn that's mm -hmm. how I learned how to speak that's how I learned how to create content on the fly and um I took one class I took one speaking class just to kind of help me develop like 
how I can go from one minute to three minutes to an hour to two hours. Right. I took one speaking class that helped me to develop a framework um, on that. And so, and then I read like crazy. Yeah. Um, so I, I gave myself a, last month, I gave myself a, um, a challenge. How mm -hmm. many books could I read in a month? Front to cover, back, you know, all, all pages. Mm -hmm. I read 15 books last month. Wow. Um, and, but a few years ago, I took a speed reading class um, from a guy named Howard Berg. Howard Berg has the world record, at least he did at the time, world record holder for reading the most pages in, I can't remember how long, but he read the bill, the tax bill of, was it, was it 2017? in some unseen, um, un ungodly amount of time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you just thousands of pages and he read it on camera, on thing he did on CNN or something like that. Oh, wow. And so he's got, you know, so he had this class that I took online and I learned how to start speed reading. It was hard at first, cause it's, it's weird. Cause you know mm -hmm. how you read mm -hmm. and to, to finish a book, you know, uh, finishing books, but I did I I didn't read like I didn't start reading like all the time until like 2016. Mm -hmm. Um but to finish a book still was hard. Right. You know, to go from the beginning to the end, reading every page mm -hmm. was hard. <clears throat> so the speed reading course helped me to develop a framework to stay focused on how to read without having to literally say every word in my mind. <clears throat> so a lot of times we read and we want to say every word right but you can't mm -hmm. your mind doesn't need that your mind reads i'm talking about can scan just like that so reading this is how i read i take a book and i just go down the book like this and literally, I didn't think that I was remembering stuff until I would start speaking. And then I would start remembering things that I read in the book. Like, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. Look at that. So mm -hmm. I read 15 books last month. And I was like, OK, so it is real. I can remember way more than what I uh, thought I could. I said, man, what else can I do? What else can you do? Yeah. So that just means that every person has the ability to do way more than you ever thought you could do. Every, there's not a person on the planet that can't do more. Wow. So that, that's probably helpful when you're, when you're speaking to entrepreneurs because of your, your, the way that you speak, right? And your story. So it makes it relatable. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely it helps. Um, I have been told that, you know, I have a certain sound in my voice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably part of the gift, right? Because everybody has a gift. You don't know exactly what, what it is. Uh, a friend of mine, um, he heard something I did on Instagram one day. He says, man, it's something about your voice that it's just so genuine. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that. And so I was like, really? Like, I, I, like you, I can't hear. I don't know what I sound like. I, 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 know, I have no idea how it comes across mm -hmm. until people say, man, like, so I did, um, I, I do a, a challenge called a Tax-Free Wealth Challenge. And when I did it, people says man I can't like the way that you gave this this the, I guess the knowledge the information and you explained all these things like who would have known it would have sounded so fun and right. that it would actually have touched me mm -hmm. and so that's and so that's what that was some of the you know you know the reviews I got that it they actually were touched by learning you know discovering some strategies about taxes mm -hmm. and so it kind of blew me away. Like you, you got that from that? Like, but that's the thing. It's mm -hmm. your gift, your right? Gift, right. So sometimes you don't know. So why did you choose to become an accountant? I'm going to ask you a question. I know you've been doing <laughs> all the questions, but why did you become an accountant? I chose to become an accountant. Um, I liked math. So when I was in high school, um, I originally said I wanted to be a math teacher. And mm -hmm. one of my um, teachers at the time recommended that I should be a, a an accountant, a CPA. She said that there weren't many female black CPAs and that it would be a good field for me. And so I took a bookkeeping class and yeah. the rest is history. You know, so I've been doing it all this time. And, and so, how many years is that? Um, <laughs> you look so young, so it can't be more than five. You're like five, <laughs> like five years. 
It's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. while. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I bet I love I, man, I love my sisters there. She's like, look, I ain't tell it. It's all good. I'm, I'm gonna leave it like that. Yeah, yeah. It's no, been I, a while. I, I, I'm on Instagram. Doing. I can't tell all my business, right? <laughs> That's right. You can't let everybody know. You can't let everybody but know. It's been a while. It's, and so, you know, I worked in, in private industry for years, you know, like about 10 years working in nursing homes. And so I did a lot of bookkeeping, yeah. um, full charge bookkeeper, all that kind of stuff. And then I went into public accounting and got my license. Um, went back to school um, after being married and having kids. So my kids kind of grew up in school, you know, grew up on a college campus gotcha. and um, yeah. got my license. I've been licensed since 2007 gotcha. and went into public accounting. Um, but one thing that I found in public accounting that didn't really appeal to me was that it was kind of like, like this, you know what I mean? It's like, you want me to be like this and my mind is like this, <laughs> you know? It's like, yes. I'm a piece of person. It's like, how can I help people? How can I share information? You know, what can I do to encourage someone? People tell me that I should be a life coach, you know, because that's just the kind of things that I enjoy doing, just encouraging people. So this is my fun part of my accounting profession. I love doing this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know what? That's interesting. Um, so we're similar. And so mm -hmm. I say we're similar is that, yeah, yeah, you got the accounting, accounting, but man, I just, you want to help people. You right. want to encourage, you want to push them forward. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, you know, it sounds like, you know, what you want to do a lot of times is way bigger than, than merely doing accounting. Right. Um, but accounting is a platform, right? So you right. use it, you know, you right. use it and, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use what you have and, mm -hmm. you know, keep going after that. Um, because on the other side of that is, is like your real goal, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know what that is. no, you don't know what it is right now, um, <laughs> but you do. So start asking questions. One of the things that I find I get a lot of value in, um, at least with my own development, is asking myself questions, um, you know, questions of, you know, things I may be feeling, um, you know, words I want to know more about, and what you will discover, and I'll give you, so I'll give you a case in point, Sunday, mm -hmm. Sunday, I was coming from a barbecue uh, at, you know, with family, and for some reason, the word doubt popped into my mind. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I want to understand that word a little bit more, man. How, how can I understand this word so that I can help people to be able to use doubt so that they can push forward in their life? This is a question I asked myself. Mm -hmm. Monday came, I had a headache all day. I'm like, why do I have a headache? I had these feel, I had these weird feelings. I wasn't feeling good. I'm like, why do I feel this way? And it took the whole day. Then the, and then the answer finally came. Well, I had to show you what it feels like to doubt. Oh, wow. When you doubt, it affects your whole body. It affects your mind. It affects everything about you. And so people get sick because they've doubted at some point or they, they're holding mm -hmm. something that's causing them not to actually move from this point to this point. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a person who says this, well, I've never done that, so I can't do it. I don't think I have that ability. They're using doubt as their as their reason mm -hmm. when doubt is the indication that you know, let me put my let me put my foot forward right you know what so if there's something that I should do you know it's like you know let me schedule with Marjorie mm -hmm. then I don't know Marjorie well press the button <laughs> click all right you click the button all right well man what what's she going to think about me I don't know fill out the application to right. fill it out well okay well, well what's going to happen when we get on click submit Mm -hmm. You'll find out when you get right. on mm -hmm. doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Doubt requires you to make a move. Right. And when you don't make a move, mm -hmm. what happens is you start, it builds up over time. That's true. And then one day you're like, man, what happened to that person? Well, they died of a heart attack and mm -hmm. they may have had this. That. Well, they, they live with doubt so long. You don't even really know why they died. Why they died. That's true. Yeah. That's, so, that's good. so I use myself a lot of times to to learn so that's how i you know account for your life i'm i'm the healthy accountant so i got to know everything like mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta know it. Mm -hmm. um and so and if that's going to be if that's going to be my platform to help people on a global level then it, it's got to be it's got to be extensive like you have to have an extensive amount of a of, of experience 
to understand when a new person shows up and they have something that oh, I haven't experienced that, but you know what? I understand it, mm -hmm. you know, from, from, from one level to the next. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so that's, that's like an exercise that I would do. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself questions mm -hmm. about things that you want to know about and, and then, you know, see what happens. I like it. I like it. Okay. Okay. So tell me about this tax-free wealth, wealth challenge, because we got to talk about wealth. Absolutely. Great question. <laughs> um, you know, look, I didn't coin the phrase, Tom will write, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, CPA got his book mm -hmm. behind me, um, Tax-Free Wealth, um, mm -hmm. Purple. And so I read the book a few years ago when, when it first came out. And I was just so like, this is good. Like, it didn't feel as taxi. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, that was good. If I'm reading a book, you know, on taxes, don't make it too like over the top, right, you know. Right. And it, and so I says, man, anybody can read this book. I said, I bet you he read he wrote this book so that the average person could read it. Mm -hmm. So I read the book. I thought it was thought it was good because I understood taxes, mm -hmm. but I wasn't thinking about it the way he was thinking about it, the way he was using. It. I says, man, I got man, I got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So. You know, uh, I listened to the book on Audible. I'm thinking, I'm like, man, you know, I started, I actually bought a course from him. Um, and I just like, you know what? I don't have to reinvent anything. So what I've done, I just kind of taken some of his ideas, but I don't actually use his ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I did one of the challenges I used, like I just kind of used it all, but then now I condense it. Mm -hmm. So I take, I took it from, way out here and now I bring it all the way in here to help people at different points um, to understand how to use taxes you know but it's it starts with a shift in your thinking so so really and I kind of talked about it right really taxes is it's just something we all got to deal with right we all right. got to deal with it right but here's the thing there's two different there's 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 two different types of taxpayers there's a there's an individual and then there's a business person mm -hmm. if we're just talking about people right so the individual you don't really get anything government's mm -hmm. just like file your taxes and pay what you pay right right the business person they says well all right you can you can pay taxes on 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 everything after you mm -hmm. pay for everything mm -hmm. wherein the individual gets to file taxes. They have to basically pay taxes on all their money all up their front. Money. Right. Up front. But the business owner doesn't have to pay tax on all their money up front. They get to mm -hmm. spend all their money first, mm -hmm. see what they have left, and then maybe I'll pay taxes or maybe I'll invest again. Maybe I'll invest right? Mm -hmm. So so in the, in, in the challenge, I, I'm kind of walking people through, at least this next time, I'm going to walk people through the state of where we are and like, like, mm -hmm. like, like why you're so confused, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Business owners are, are totally confused about accounting and taxes. They, they think they can just hire any kind of professionals. Mm -hmm. Well, you can hire professionals. You need to understand as the entrepreneur, as the business owner, what you need to know. Because if you know what you need to know, then you can ask the right questions for whoever is going to do it for you, which mm -hmm. I do suggest you should hire someone. Mm -hmm. But let me walk you through. I'm going to walk you through how you can, you know, see how it works, how you can see a strategy. And then you can, oh, wow, I can actually do that for my own business. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, but you just need to understand the strategy. So the the challenge focuses on uh content right mm -hmm. context or context mm -hmm. yeah the context is really the strategy wherein the content is all the details which you want to get with the right people to get the details because look at the end of the day i don't want people in business doing their own taxes you know mm -hmm. especially right. if they have a lot of things going on because that's not what you're supposed to be doing right. um but what i do want you to be able to at least at the very onset, even if if you knew what your strategy could be, mm -hmm. it's kind of like if you understood segregating and working through, well, I've got to separate this from that and this from this. So when I go into my 
CPA, I'm a lawyer, so they can kind of start working with me. I can show them this is how I'm seeing things. And, right. and that's where the right. understanding the whole big picture goes into helping the professionals. Because once, if you can come into the professionals and show them where you're going, like, oh man, you're, you know exactly where you're going. Makes mm -hmm. the job so much easier mm -hmm. for the professional that's, that's going to work with you. Because then they don't have to prod it out of you and say, well, what's your vision? Like, what are you doing? Like, like, then they're just kind of like working off of what you've already done. So I, my goal is to teach people how to kind of present the picture so that when they go and, you know, get all the details worked on, then that, that part is done. I like that. I like that. Because a lot of times people are just start a business. So, and I guess that goes back to what you said, you help entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yep. Yep. Because, you know, say I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like, OK, well, uh, you're not quite an entrepreneur yet. Right. Um, you're you know, but, you know, you're starting and you, you 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 may even be out there selling and you may even be making money. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen a lot of people make good money and still have no clue what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Still have not done done some of the things that need to be done just so that if they really wanted to get to a new level, they could. Mm -hmm. Some people do it through brute force because they have the kind of personality that can get them to like, you know, like a super high level. Mm -hmm. But everybody's not like that. Right. You know, you know, there's most people won't make 100 cold calls a day. Right. You know, right. <laughs> so, right. you know, most people, you know, can't stand rejection. And, you know, it's like well, that's, that's what you're signing up for. So, mm -hmm. you know, so want people to just be well aware so that, look, I get so many questions when people join my challenge, basic questions, how do you make money? That's not even a tax question. Right, right. But I asked them a question like, hey, well, like, like, what's your number one challenge or number one question you have about money? And it's, how, oh, how, well, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. So you don't even understand the basics yet. Right. So, you know, so it's, you know, it's really seeing where, where, where the needs are. There's a lot of people, which there, which look, I've had coaches and one of my first coaches, they always want you to go at, just go after the bigger companies, just go after the big ones. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the money to stand the third. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But I was a little guy for so long, right. That I don't want to leave these guys hanging. Mm -hmm. So then if I don't want, then I have to create something that can work. Um, so that was, you know, it's like, well, it's, I guess what I have to do is, you know, serve a larger audience mm -hmm. um, so that so that a larger audience can can actually become entrepreneurs. Look, if people become entrepreneurs, real entrepreneurs, that would solve so many problems mm -hmm. financially for a lot of people. If people understood that the possibility of them doing it is that they can now however it's hard mm -hmm. always want to preface that because i don't want people to think that oh i can just start and it's all going to work no 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 it's not going to no it's not it, it more than likely you'll fail <laughs> so just be willing <laughs> be willing and take it on the chin and just keep going mm -hmm. because you're going to need a lot of you're going to need a lot of push and desire and passion to get you through the hard times this is so true so true Okay. So does your firm fo focus on any one particular um, industry or area? Great question. You know what? We were, we were industry focused for a while, like in, on real estate. We are mainly focused in real estate. Um, and so what's, here's what's happened. And, and, and so things are still evolving in <laughs> kind of how things are working. I'm seeing so many people that need help before taxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that most of what we're focusing on is before taxes, which is non-industry specific. Mm -hmm. And then when they come out the other side, we're not going to take everybody coming out. And, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't decided if, it's, if, if, if that company is going to handle all real estate. Right now, I'm not even, even pushing a lot of people into that company right now. Cause I, cause I'm just like, nope, you need to go this way. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what you're doing and we don't right. want to waste our time. We don't want to waste our time with you, right. you know? So, because think about it, the amount that you have to pay, well, I'm sorry, the, the amount that someone has to pay for real services, mm -hmm. 
real. Now, when you think about wealth, think about the word wealth. Mm -hmm. And you you got to pay some money for some wealth. So if, if, if we're setting ourselves apart as helping people build wealth as accountants, Jen, we cannot take little money. Mm. You That's can't take little money. <laughs> you can't take little money. So you got to say, well, hmm, instead of taking a, you know, a $4,000 client, then the minimum client is 15,000. Mm -hmm. You know, minimum client is 30,000. Right. Like, because it, we can't really help you at that level. It's too mm -hmm. small. You're going to have to learn how to do business. And you may, you probably need to learn how to kind of do a lot of that yourself. Right. Um, and if you maybe hired somebody who did it for pennies, great, right? Because now you can, now there's some businesses that have scaled bookkeeping on small numbers, mm -hmm. but they got a lot of money to back that, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have a lot of money to back your business, then it's going to be hard to scale small numbers. Small numbers. It's, it's hard. Because then you, it's, you're going to have a hard time hiring. Mm -hmm. Then you're stuck doing all the work. Then you're sitting here pulling your hair out at tax time, pulling your hair like, oh, my goodness, this is crazy. Right, right. So it's now also like taking accountants and say, hey, accountants, let's change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's change. Let's, let's become educators. Right. Like a lot of us need to be educators mm -hmm. so we can educate the clients first, first, give them the education, give your clients the education you think they need for mm -hmm. what you want to do with them. Right. So right. that you set them up, you can scale that. Right. Because when you educate, then that means that's like, you can, that's coaching. Like you can take thousands and thousands of clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what would that do to your business? Right. As an accountant, it would, it would, it, it would, it would just blow it up mm -hmm. then you can when you take a client on you take the right clients you've got staff to handle that stuff and then you as a business owner you don't have to be sitting there like doing all the work doing all the work right not worth it right <laughs> no. right i agree i agree i agree okay so well we talked to well do you do any estate planning Nope, I don't do estate planning. That's that's definitely not my area. I go as far as um, tax planning, but I'm breaking the tax planning piece down into more of a process mm -hmm. while working with you so that it's not like we got to go and create the will. It's like when you come in, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to start fitting into a certain box. Wow. Yeah, because that's how we're going to standardize. You know, so we'll standardize, standardize through non-specific. And then if you need certain things later, then, then we have a higher level team that does that. Mm -hmm. But the initial process is to take you through the process of how our firm works and everybody gets that same process, mm -hmm. okay. you know, so estate planning, nope. Don't do that. Um, don't do anything else besides what I've just mentioned. You know, so it's only going to, like we're moving away from just doing individual tax for non-business owners. Um, mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. business owner or bust. Um, <laughs> and well, it's business owner or bust. But I, so I asked, <clears throat> and I've been asking clients who have been around for a while, hey, do you want to start a business? You know, I've always wanted to start a business. Well, you know, if you're going to be my client, you're going to have to start a business. Oh, wow. and, and you're going to have to learn how to run a business. So if we want to keep the relationship going, here's the direction I can, I can help you with. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. So, so it's, it's not just, I'm here to provide a service. It's like, I really want to see you succeed. I want to groom you so that you can take advantage of all of the, the, the benefits of the tax code. Well, and let's take it to what people really want, Mar Mar Marjorie. They want more money. Mm -hmm. If people want more money, it, really more money is sh just shifting mm -hmm. how you see money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the, the fastest route to, to, to earning more money is discovering that there is more money. Money, right. So just because you worked at that job for the past 20 years, that just means that there's, more, there's way more opportunities in that job. Mm -hmm. You don't have to quit your job 
to do it, you have to first shift, go through the shifting process. And by the time you come out of the shifting process, you could now see that, oh, shoot, I can just go and do what I really want to do. So I'm on mission. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to take people who want to get on mission Mm -hmm. and send them into their mission. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's my passion. And if you don't have a mission, great. No problem. Wow. But you may not, you know, you may not like me because I may be always talking about getting, you know, getting out there and helping. And, you know, so that's just a shift, you know, and that comes with healthy accountant, account for your life, you know, and, and, you know, in order to account for my life, I had to discover these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that because it's changing, you know, they say that the industry in itself is changing to more of a consultant role, you know, and so that's just you evolving, you know, to that change, being proactive, which is absolutely. So one thing that everybody has to remember an industry, in like if, if there's an industry, say accounting, mm-hmm. all industries at some point get disrupted. And accounting has been disrupted by software. It's been disrupted by commodity, mm-hmm. right? So you, so you can go to school and man, everything's great, right? But there's so many people who can do your job now overseas for, for pennies. So Mm -hmm. if you don't realize it, wait a second, where, yeah, $75,000 a year, somebody will do that job for 10. Yep. It's very true. (laughs) What that means is that, dude, you are replaced, Mm -hmm. which means that you better figure something out. Mm -hmm. Because if all you're doing is transactional style work, right, then you can forget it. So consulting and then creating your own process. Yes. This is what every successful, super successful entrepreneur has done. They have created their own process. They cannot be fired. They can't be pushed out because what they have and what they do is, is unique to what, how they do it. Mm-hmm. So I would challenge anybody to say, go create your own way mm-hmm. no one's there it's unique to you and no one can take it from you and you can do it when you want to do it right and it's not going away mm-hmm. uh, that's cool okay that's powerful it's like everything's been powerful powerful bars <laughs> <laughs> It's good because it's not your typical accountant conversation. You know what I mean? It's like, we're not sitting here talking debits and credits and get your QuickBooks cleaned up and all that kind of stuff. And that's what I like about accounting is that it's so varied. You know what I mean? It's not just this. So yeah. Yep. So I'm just, I'm a different accountant. You are. I'm a different one. Um, Different, uh, you know, I have a put my, my, my accounting is more based on it's perspective now. It's my perception. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like, wait a second, I've been an accountant all these years, but look at how I see this now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so, you know, that's that that's that uniqueness that I know that Marjorie has, all mm-hmm. the listeners, all the other accountants that may listen to this. Look, if you listen to this and you're an accountant, then that just means that you you have something that neither me or Marjorie has. Right. Which man how powerful is that that you could you could be in this we could be all be in the same industry and not compete and not compete yes yeah I don't see I don't look at you as a as my competition I'm like man how can I work with Marjorie Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. how like like how can we you know have a partnership and you know because we're not yes I'm in accounting I'm in tax but we don't compete no I serve a specific type of client you know, you know, and it's not, it's not going to be upfront doing taxes. It's upfront getting them straight so that when they come out the other end, we can push them out towards their mission, you know, but then that just means that there's so many other clients out there who just has businesses, right? Right. 
Mm-hmm. It's not about mission. They just sell a product. They sell a right. service. Right. Right. So there's so many clients left over. Millions. Millions. Yeah. There's there's so many. I, I tell people, um, my thing is the hamburger story. You know, that's what I call it. It's like, you know, I drive down my street. There's Jack in the Box. There's the Habit. There's yes. McDonald's. There's, you know, whatever. It's like they could be right on the same block, but they're all making money. You yes. know what I mean? So be your I own love that. <laughs> You know, I love that because, you know, if you ever notice any of those types of businesses, they like to come and set up right where another one is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Burger King would be across the street from McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Like they would, you know, they would always say, you know, if McDonald's there, I'm going. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. people want choices anyway. Everybody's not going to McDonald's. Everybody's not going to, Everybody's not going to Habit. Everybody's not going to Five Guys. Everybody is going to go where they want to go. And at the end of the day, if you are there where there's people and you got a burger, Mm-hmm. you're going to get business. You're going to get business. We used to think that, oh my goodness, there's competition around. I, I want to be all by myself. Nobody can come over here. No, we should all be lined up together. Together. That's yeah. a great, I, I love that you said that because I'm going to remember that. I'm going to create a hamper. I'm going to create a little, a little thing so we can all hang out together. We can all hang out. Yeah. Absolutely. So That's we can hang out. Marjorie's going to be there. She's doing mm-hmm. this. Jay's doing this and a few other people. Mm-hmm. and come and get what you need come and get what you need yes and that that's how it should be you know it should be where we can all you know collaborate you know share information share you know share tactics share absolutely share tips, trips, 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 yeah trips, we you know, share whatever. what's everybody shares what's working and mm-hmm. then the whole group collectively okay. gets better that's that's what yeah. that's a mastermind you know that mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. our mastermind that's what we need it well there are a couple book couple groups like that on um on Facebook that do things like that. Like the um, the Accountants of Color is one and there's another EA group, but you know, hey, maybe I just need to have my my podcast group. You know, maybe I need to start another Facebook group where we're just yeah. gonna pass things on, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't, be, you can't have too many groups, right? No, because it's just more people to talk to and to figure out what, what, what how can we all get better? How can we all get better, yeah. You know, so and I like the, the wealth. Um, I've not read that book, but I, I have it here and I do have a credit on my Audible, so I'm going to purchase it yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and listen to it as I ride down the street today. But um, absolutely, because that's a big part of it, too. So do you do you talk to your clients a lot about transferring the wealth? Or is it just in the, the entity structure? So I'm I, I'm at the front end. So I'm definitely looking for partnerships to handle some of that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because hey, it, it's not it's not something that I'm doing right now. So mm-hmm. because a lot a lot of the businesses I'm working with now is still at the beginning, you know. Beginning. So okay. um, it's 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 you still got to prepare, right? You mm-hmm. still got to prepare for it. So mm-hmm. you know that part. That part we don't do and probably won't do. We're just, you know, because that's something you don't have. We don't have to do everything. We just, right, we just, right. we're just going to handle what we handle. And then there, that means that there's opportunities for other people. Because mm-hmm. that, that's a big one that I saw too. And I, I've interviewed a few um, estate attorneys, <laughs> you know, because like I saw um, on Instagram in 2020 where people were making a million dollars and, and it was for their son. And it's like, okay, well, how are you going to make sure that that? gets to your son mm. you know <laughs> you know you want to set your children up but how are you going to make sure so that's something that we need to address as well you know how are you going to yeah. transfer that wealth but I, I like the tax-free wealth and, and to start a business yeah all your clients have to be business owners At, yeah man um because it, it's just a different mindset right and so we want to first you know the goals to adjust mindset go from one to another, just keep moving because you can like, like you can never end, like nothing, Mm -hmm. nothing is static. Right. So as long as we keep moving forward, you'll always be growing and you'll always be learning. And Mm -hmm. so if a person is just to the point where they don't want to learn anything, I'm like, uh, I'm good. Like we should, (laughs) we we can still be friends and hang it some, sometime. We just, think different right and so right. it's it's but it's you know I'm, you're going to thrive around people who have that growth oh, oriented you. mindset mindset yes yes i agree i agree i i put myself in situations where i am uncomfortable 
mm-hmm. a lot of times, even with recording a podcast, it's like, um, I have been told to do it and do it. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it, yeah. you know? And so you did it and you perfect it as you go along. Right. Absolutely. And I've Absolutely. met some wonderful people, you know, I've, yeah. I've met some wonderful people. Yeah. And I know there's so much more. So Jay, leave us with, leave us with the gym, leave us with the gym. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine what it's going to be, but leave us. <laughs> she says, leave us with the gym. Leave us well, with the gym. Something, something. Yeah. I know it'll be good. You know, the interesting thing about, about business money, you know, taxes, entrepreneurship is that, you know, all those things have their, have, have their place. And they have their place because they are resources. Mm-hmm. They are they are things that we use, right? So you use all these things. And, you know, so I had a conversation just this afternoon with my mother-in-law. And, you know, what, what we miss a lot of times is all the little things. Like, mm-hmm. and so as business owners and entrepreneurs, and yes, we're going after all the stuff, you know, but it's really, wait a second, if, if, if we really focus in on what the present opportunity is, you know, how I can use the, my time right now and, and, and put my best foot forward every single moment that I have, then what that would do for anybody right. is put them in a situation where they cannot regret, mm. right? Because when people die, that's the first thing that happens. Regret comes in on, oh, I wish I would have did this and wish I would have done that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You can put, go to sleep tonight and you can say, man, you know what? I don't have to regret because today I acted the way that I should because not because someone told me to act that way. It's because I told myself I wanted to be this way. Hey, I said I wanted to be in good health. And that means that I've got to do some stuff. Mm-hmm. I've got to hit the gym. I've got to watch my diet. I've got to think right. I've got to, I've got to pray. I've got to do all these things to, you know, to exude good health. And hey, what about my business? Right. Business, there's a lot of healthy things you got to do in your business. You, you know, whatever those things are, you got to make calls. You got to, you got to follow up with people. You've got to create market. You got to have marketing. You've got to be doing all this. You got to have all these mechanisms going. Right. What about your marriage? What about, you know, all your relationships, like everything, everything that we do, there's just processes around those things. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to get rid of regret for our business, we just leave it on business. Mm -hmm. That just means all you have to focus on is the next step that you have to make today to like this hour. And then you do them. So when you go to sleep, you hmm. breathe free, <laughs> but you didn't finish, but you know that, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to keep pushing my foot forward because I know that at some point the results will come in, mm-hmm. but don't worry about the results. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the results. It's every day focus on using that time with what you have now and everything's going to work out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm living proof that, and I live this. Because look, at the end of the day, look, I'm not a professed guru. I'm not a professed anything more than a person who has uh, come under the enlightenment of his God, right? I've got my own God. You got yours. If you don't believe in the same one that I believe in. So my life was transformed through what I'm sharing with you. Mm -hmm. And so in that, hopefully you got value from it. You can use it in your your job, your life, however you want to use it. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm just honored that I could be here of service today. Awesome. Jay, thank you so much. That was awesome. You know, we, we always think of accounting um, and taxes, like I said, stiff, you know, kind of like rigid, whatever. It's like, yeah. so it's, it's nice that we had a different perspective on tax and accounting. So I appreciate you so much for being here. I know that our listeners, my listeners were blessed and, and encouraged and inspired, you know, even just to start a business. I know that, that, that they got something of value out of this, this conversation. So thank you again. Um, Jay can be found on Instagram at The Healthy Accountant. Um, Facebook, it's Jay Moore CPA. Um, 
Twitter, it's JM underscore CPA, and the website is um, thehealthyaccountants.com. So thank you again, everyone. My name is Marjorie, and I'm signing off.